Super Solvers Gizmos and Gadgets by The Learning Company is the fifth game in the Super Solvers franchise. Gizmos and Gadgets follows the Super Solver to Shady Glen Technology Center, which has been taken over by the Master of Mischief, Morty Maxwell. Morty has declared that he will only leave if you can beat him in 15 races in three different categories. Automotive, Alternative Energy, and Aircraft. Your job as the Super Solver is to accept his challenge and become head scientist of Shady Glen Technology Center. Morty has locked all the doors of the Shady Glen Tech Center and has let his robotic cyber chimps take over. To win the races, you have to search for parts. However, between sets of the gym, Mortimer's cyber chimps are also searching for parts, and if you touch one of them, they'll beat you up and steal a part from your inventory. Luckily, if you throw a banana at them, they'll eat it and fall asleep dropping either the part they stole from you, or a random part they picked up from the warehouse. Even more luckily, the people who made this game recognize that the only thing Cyberchimps really do for the game is to make it twice as long, so you can turn them off if you want. Get out of here. You can choose whichever building you want to work in, in whatever order you want, but between the puzzles and the floor layouts, they seem to be designed to be done from right to left, one race at a time. Upon entering a building for the first time, you'll be presented with the blueprint for that race's vehicle. Here you'll find information on every part you need, including what will make your vehicle go faster or slower. There are critical parts that directly affect your vehicle's speed, such as engine size, tire width, or differential ratio, parts that are necessary but interchangeable, such as brakes or most fuel tanks, and parts that are purely cosmetic. Although. If you think painting a car red doesn't make it go faster, then we don't need to be friends. It's pretty important to have most, if not all, of the best parts, because Morty's actually a pretty good mechanic, and he seems to be even better when you leave the Cyberchimps on. In this race, every part on my airplane is the best version possible except for the tail, and he still beats me. And in this game, if you're not first, you're last. The races are honestly a pretty great thing to work towards, and they scale with each level pretty nicely. Well, okay, Gas Powered Racer 4 was a little weak, but working your way up from a pedal powered racer to an electric car to a hydrogen powered car is pretty sweet. Even sweeter are the aircraft races, where you race blimps, helicopters, and even personal jets. Plus, once you clear a race, the winning vehicle is parked outside the Shady Glen Technology Center for all to see. Taking the pneumatic tube into the warehouse, the player takes direct control of the Super Solver for the first time. The faceless hero can only move right or left under his own power, but he can walk, run, and even jump pretty far when he wants to. To go up, the Super Solver can use air vents, springboards, and trampolines but to go down, he has to fall through a hole in the floor. The warehouses start out pretty straightforward, but they become outright mazes in later levels. A warehouse has two views. The front view, which shows that building's section's full map, and the back view, where most of the parts are held. The back view does not contain any methods of going back up, so I recommend starting at the top and working your way down. However, Morton locked all the doors with seven different kinds of science puzzles. I guess we'll just have to prove we're a better scientist than Morty. Simple machine puzzles have two different versions. One shows the player a basic tool and asks them to identify the simple machines used in the tools, such as screws, wedges, incline planes, pulleys, and various kinds of levers. The other version gives the player a box of parts and asks them to put together the tool itself parts that are pieced together correctly will stick together if one piece is moved. I've been trying to put the seats on the seesaw wrong since I was five. Energy matching puzzles ask the player to match objects with the kinds of energy they use or produce. Energy types range from things like mechanical, chemical, or light, to concepts like kinetic and potential energy. When a match is correct, the object is demonstrated in motion. Force puzzles start out by demonstrating thrust to weight ratios and by having the player shoot differently weighted objects into holes. The puzzles next add gravity variables, asking the player to fire the objects under higher or lower gravities. 
Then the puzzles add levels of friction, instructing the player to add sand or oil to a ramp. Finally, the puzzles vary the height of the ramps. These are probably the most fun of the puzzles, as the level of variety they offer is higher than any of the other puzzle types. Balance puzzles give the player a scale with weights and set distances, and asks you to balance it. These are actually equations in disguise. Add the products of the weights and the rungs that they're hanging from, and create the same number on the other side. A lot of these have multiple solutions. They're not as scary as they sound. Electricity puzzles challenge the player with creating a complete circuit that turns on one or more light bulbs. Eventually these circuits get fairly complicated, adding multiple on-off switches and splitters. I like these puzzles because they're challenging without being tedious. Gear puzzles, however, are challenging and tedious. The Super Solver is given a series of light bulbs and a single crank from which to turn them on. These can get pretty extreme, but even the relatively simple ones can take a lot of time. I'll do each of them the first time I see them just to prove a point. Magnet puzzles, however, are a bit of a different story. These ask the player to arrange a series of magnets on a table in a given shape. It's nice at first, watching the magnets move towards each other or away from each other depending on how you place them, but as the game asks you to put down more and more of them, the game slows to a crawl as you wait for each magnet to get into place before you can pick up the next one. Plus there's a chance you'll get to the end of the puzzle and find out you made it the wrong way from the very first piece. If the game has any major flaw, it might be that you can quit a puzzle and go back to the same door and get a different puzzle, because in the later two-thirds of the game I just absolutely refuse to do these magnet puzzles anymore. Getting through the doors to keep winning races though is a pretty fantastic motivator, because it's still pretty effective on me now even as an adult. In fact, I would say that if you're an adult playing a Super Solvers game for the first time, Gizmos and Gadgets would be the one I'd recommend, because it's aimed at teaching middle school science rather than teaching kids how to read. On top of that, it's Abandonware, so it's free! You'll need DOSBox if you're running Windows 7 onwards, but it's pretty simple to get running. And that's Super Solvers Gizmos and Gadgets. You've become head scientist of Shady Glen Technology Center, and Morty Maxwell has flown off to parts unknown. Hopefully, now that you're in charge of the place, you can get rid of Shady Glen Security 386, sell some of those jet engines you've got lying around, and pay your real security team next time. Do my, do my